go around here? This road behind me is usually like teeming with people at this time of the morning. Students, people going to work, the train station's like right there. But we're still in level three, but at least I get to go back to work. So unless they can do takeaways, all the shops are closed. If you can't work from home, you can go to work. That's where my job comes in. Now I don't know if you remember before level four. Oh my god. Well, I think we've solved that problem. Alright, hopefully you can see that. This is the plan, the architectural drawings. So here are the cabinets. Top cabinet still on there, a tall floor to ceiling cabinet here, and the washer and dryer will go in there. And then we'll have a sink here with pretty much four doors along the bottom. And as you can see, the paint is kind of telling the story. Washing machine will move over there where those two plug sockets are. And uh, this middle section will be between the top and bottom cabinets. I just accidentally locked my van. All right, let's look at the materials. And as you can see here, we've got a whole bunch of plywood. It's laminated top and bottom with different colors. The main cabinet is gonna be white and then the doors are gonna be this lava gray, they call it. And we've got a bench top at the bottom here, which you'll see later. One thing I'm appreciating is how much easier it must be with a giant sliding table saw and a CNC machine and things like that. The kind of thing that kitchen companies probably use. I'm a builder, I renovate houses, I've got a track saw. You're much more reliant on my measuring and making sure I'm cutting the track saw in the right place. And speaking of track saw, if you didn't notice already, this is a new Makita 40 volt track saw. And yes, it only takes one battery. There you go. I'm gonna do a full video about this. Um, it takes one battery and it fits on the old tracks. See how it goes, eh? This is going to be like part one of the cabinet making by the way, um, or laundry storage, whatever you want to call it. This is going to take me longer than one exciting episode. But it's kind of the ideal job because a lot of the bigger construction companies, and let's say you've got like 50 guys on one site, those guys have to contend with a lot of like social distancing measures and rules and everything that I don't have to worry about. Obviously I have to you know, be considerate of the clients and work around that, but other than that, working by myself is convenient. So I've cut uh, most of the side and bottom pieces and I've got an issue. Started assembling some pieces here to see what would look the best. Anyway, there's the pieces I've cut and uh, my issue is I need the three sheets at the bottom here. 
Those three sheets at the bottom are white, the same as the cabinet, but they are thinner than the cabinets. And I got them to do the back of the cabinets. So I need to get these out. Fortunately, I wasn't here when the delivery came, so I couldn't uh, make sure that those back ones were separated. But hey, let's screw these things together and then we'll, uh, then we'll get to that for the back. screwed the sides on. Not glued yet, but I will glue it. I also need to add a middle partition. This cabinet's going up on the wall, so the bottom's kind of suspended from the back of the cabinet, if that makes sense. Having another partition in the middle will help keep this bottom from sagging. So there you go, wall hung cabinets. They go right there, up the top. And so you don't see that pink plasterboard there, we need that backing sheet that I talked about before. It's also to eliminate this. Screwing to the back gives us lateral strength. And as you can see, the lateral strength is very necessary. And be careful, don't chuck them or smack them together. Yeah, the surfaces. Basically, we need the bottom three white sheets. Thank you. Good, good bro. Here we go. The reason I didn't glue it is because I didn't have the back. The back was at the bottom of the plywood sheets. So now I'm gonna unscrew it, glue it, screw it back down, and pop the back on. And the issue is, if I needed to move it to make it square, I would have cracked all that glue if I glued it earlier. Now, if you made it to this point of today's exciting episode, here's a little treat for you. It's the Makita 40 volt Brad nailer. They actually made one. My, my hopes might be a bit too high. I've already done a couple of test shots. Um, it, it's got no air power in it. Battery powered only. We'll uh, pop some play on the back of this and have a look. So I saw that Brad Naylor on Tools and Stuff YouTube channel. I'll link it below if you haven't seen it. Um, he reviews a lot of Makita tools and all the 40 volt stuff. So as soon as I saw his video with that nail gun, I hit up Makita and said, all right, do you have the Brad nailer? And luckily they did. So I got it off them. But uh, it's limited to 40 mils. But the thing that excites me about it is, A, it takes a 40 volt battery. A lot of my tools take 40 volt batteries. And B, it's built kind of like a drill. Like the base of that and the base of that. It's like the same, it's even got the same belt hook and everything. Anyway.
as you can imagine 40 mil is of severe limitation but let's see if we can handle the plywood Will it nail? It's in, it's definitely in. That's firing into the plywood, surprisingly, but I will say one thing though. <laughs> I'm gonna lose that. It's just kind of sitting on there with a hope and a dream. Ah, just going in the plywood though. This is this is this is good, this is promising. Beautiful. I'm going to end this exciting episode here. My cabinet making career is taking off. And if you want to see how the rest of it goes, stay tuned for the next exciting episode. Make sure you subscribe and all that good stuff. Bell notification, that's what all the YouTubers say, right? Thank you. Catch you in the next one. Bye. See you later. Bye.